Longevity therapies for women, what works and what doesn't. I'm Kayla Barnes-Lenz. I've been testing these therapies for over a decade and we're gonna be keeping it short and simple, what works and what doesn't. So what does work? Sleep optimization for women. Go to bed before 10 and make sure to get seven to eight and a half hours of sleep. Yes, women need more sleep than men. What also works? Sauna, absolutely incredible for detoxification. We know that women experience higher levels of toxins and are slower to detox. So I'm doing sauna between five to seven times per week. I love the brand Heavenly Heat because it's the lowest VOCs and lowest EMF and ELF on the market. Healthiest sauna brand out there. What else works? Strength training. We absolutely have to be building muscle mass and by strength training, you are not going to get bulky. We don't have the hormones or the testosterone and we're not probably eating enough food to actually add on muscle mass, but you will get toned from strength training. It's also great for our bone density, mood, hormones, brain health, and so much more. Next thing that works is conscious or deliberate intentional fasting, but not all the time, not way too much. When I first started my protocols, I was in a significant caloric deficit. We know that this works for mice and probably for men for improving longevity. It can actually increase longevity by quite a bit, 20 to 30% with a 20 to 30% caloric restriction. But that didn't work for me as a woman. I watched my thyroid numbers decline, my hormones become uh, dysregulated and so much more. So now I'm doing time restricted feeding. So I eat my last last meal of the day at about 3.30 or 4 p.m. And then I begin eating again around 6.30 a.m. prior to my workouts. Um, it could be a little bit closer to seven and then I immediately uh, refuel after. And then I have what would be kind of a third meal. So I'm eating about three meals per day. One of them is in the form of a protein coffee. So collagen peptides, colostrum and creatine with a little bit of coffee in the morning. Then I have my first meal of the day, which is breakfast. And then I have my early dinner. So that's how I'm eating, but we don't wanna be pushing it far too much, especially Especially if you're a woman already uh, with low body fat or have uh, a lot of issues with a ton of glucose variations or metabolic health, you want to be eating enough, but of course not eating too much either. Another thing that I don't think works best for women is ultra low carbohydrates or keto specific diets. We do need a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, these complex carbohydrates. I don't eat refined or processed carbohydrates, but I do think that it can benefit us at certain times in our cycle. So in our follicular phase, we're more insulin sensitive, so you can have have a little bit more carbohydrates, always these complex carbohydrates. Then in our luteal phase, even though we could become a little bit less insulin sensitive, we still want a little bit of a complex carbohydrate to help build that progesterone. The other thing that doesn't work is biohacking without testing. Yes, you can buy the red light panel, you can buy uh, hyperbaric oxygen sessions, you can buy cryo sessions, whatever it is that you want, you can buy IV therapies, that's all great. But if you don't know what you're looking for, if you don't know what your main health hurdles are gonna be, if you don't have an idea of what's occurring in your body right now, I think honestly the money would be better spent in testing. I think a comprehensive lab panel, including hormones, uh, potentially micronutrients, and a gut test are so incredibly beneficial for women. If you wanna add on a bio-age test, a total tox burden, tests of these nature, love it. But you cannot proceed with an ultimate health optimization plan without knowing your data. The other thing that just won't work is ignoring your cycle. If you have dysregulated cycles, you're not ovulating, your period's all over the place, this is something I would, it, immediately move up to the highest priority. This is a vital sign for us. This is a biomarker. We need to be menstruating regularly. And if we're not working with the provider to begin optimizing our health so that we may in fact do that. Of course, there are outlying situations that you know are completely out of your control. Many times we either are under too much stress with too high of cortisol. We you know potentially have a metabolic disorder that we need to resolve, but there's definitely uh, many cases in which we can improve this and get our cycle to be regular. There's a few emerging uh, therapies that I would say that are super interesting. So this doesn't go into what works or what doesn't work, but things that I'm just excited about. So stem cell banking and using them for the future. If you were to get ill or for longevity, I love this idea. I did it myself. Peptides are really exciting. So things like BPC for wound healing or recovery, things like uh, GHCKU for skin health is also very exciting. CJC or test Morellin for a little bit of body recomp. Um, very exciting things that are on the forefront of female health. I think at the end of the day, anything that we can do to focus on ovarian longevity. Another thing that works is red light therapy. We know that um, our ovaries have some of the highest concentrations of mitochondria. So we really need to make sure our mitochondrial health is absolutely on par. So I love doing red light therapy to the ovary area to improve the mitochondrial function. 
I'm Kayla Barnes-Lenz. This is a short rundown of what works and what doesn't for women. If you're interested in learning more, you can subscribe, follow me, like, comment, share. All of it is so valuable. If you've learned anything from me, the best way to support me, it's free, is just a simple share.